It's the middle of February and I need to take care of the remaining balance of my winter squash. We had a bumper crop this summer of winter squash and this is what I have left over. Have a, I have a whole bunch of butternut squash. I got tons of butternut squash left and I have some acorn squash and I need to go ahead and process it before it all turns bad. So I'm going to show, a, show you a really simple way of taking care of winter squash and that's basically to turn it into a puree which is a really good way of serving it with uh, beef and so we're going to go ahead and take care of that and prep it to go into the oven and then we'll show you what to do next so we're going to go ahead and, and take care of my acorn squash and my butternut squash I'm going to be doing a lot of chopping and I just want to show you a little thing that I do so I don't damage my uh, countertops is I have a, a wood cutting board here but what I end up doing is I fold up a kitchen towel and put it underneath my cutting board and it kind of helps absorb some of the shock so that when I'm doing my chopping I'm not beating on my countertop so bad. It's just something that I found nice and helpful. So anyway, what we're going to end up doing, and we're going to start with the uh, butternut squash, and I'm going to go ahead and take off the top, take off the bottom first, and I'm only going to do that so I have something to keep it level with so when I take off the top section. So we're going to go ahead and take off just the bottom part here so I can put it straight up and down if that makes any sense. And just take off about a half inch on the top here like so and then I'm going to go ahead and guillotine this all the way down from top to bottom just like so and the important thing when you begin make sure you can count to 10 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 before and after make sure you have all your digits and then I'm just going to take a spoon here and just take out all the seeds here just like so. So we're going to go through all my squash and cut these in half and I'm just going to leave these in the oven just like a baked potato or a sweet potato and bake these at 400 degrees until the meat inside can be uh, stabbed with a fork. And we're going to do the same thing with the acorn squash. Just going to take off the back section just right here and then take the top just a little bit off there and just cut this right smack in two pieces and clean it out with a spoon just like that so I'm going to go through all my squash and prepare these also for the oven I have my first batch of winter squash in the oven ready to go. It's just sitting there on the rack. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the oven at 400 degrees until I can go ahead and pierce the flesh with a fork, just like a baked potato. This is my acorn and butternut squash out of the oven, and I just basically roast them right on the racks in the oven for anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half, depending on how big they are. And how much I put in and you can kind of see that the bottoms of the squash are a little bit brown from the roasting process and they seem to work out just fine and so we're going to go ahead and take these now and scoop out the meat from the squash and put them into bowl and then we're just going to mix them up and puree them before we put them into the harvest right trays Out of all the squash, I'd probably say that butternut is my favorite, and it's popular to go along with beef and meats as a puree. And when cooked properly, it separates from the skin almost without any problem. 
and so it comes out really, really easy. So that's the butternut squash onto the acorn squash. The acorn squash, the, the pill doesn't peel off quite as easy as the butternut, so we can just skip, we can just scoop this out with a spoon. You can, you can see that I got much greater yield from the butternut squash than from the acorn squash. Next step to this is to puree this in a mixer. Now, some people might want to add a little bit of butter or brown sugar to this. I would suggest you don't because that's just going to make it harder to freeze dry. This has a lot of sugar as it is, and when this comes out of your freeze dryer, it's going to be very stiff and very solid, and it's going to have some pretty sharp corners on it that could puncture your Mylar bags. Adding brown sugar to that is going to make those edges even sharper. So I would just go ahead and puree this as is, freeze dry it, and put it into your bottles or bags as is, and then you can add your extra uh, ingredients later on. Not a problem with adding a little bit of extra water to make the mixing a little bit easier because the water will just come out in the freeze dry process. So these are my trays ready for the freeze dryer or the freezer. In my case, I pre-freeze all my trays before they go into the freeze dryer. This is the butternut squash and this one with the darker color is the acorn squash. And I basically put the same amount of weight in each tray, that way the trays get done at the same time. So we're going to go ahead and, and pre-freeze these, put them in the freeze dryer, and then when they come out we'll do the next step. This is my winter squash right out of the freeze dryer. This is my acorn, and this is my butternut. Now, as I was mentioning, just the sweetness, the natural sugars in this butternut will make these edges extremely sharp. This stuff is really hard. If you use uh, mylar bags in bagging this, some of these edges will be really, really sharp. Now, when we originally uh, cook this in the oven and then uh, scoop this into the bowls and beat it with a mixer. Even though we mix the uh, pulp of the uh, squash with a mixer, there are still strands of uh, squash that's going to be in here. And so if I were to rehydrate this right now, the puree would not be as smooth as it could be. So what we're going to do to make the puree really, really smooth, and if you wanted to use this for baby food, we're going to go ahead and send this through a blender and make it into a powder. That way, when you do uh, reconstitute it, the puree is going to be really, really smooth, almost like a baby food. So we're going to send all this through a, uh, a blender and powder it, and then we're going to go ahead and pack it, pack it up. So when this is all done, you will have a nice powder that when you add water to this now, this will make one of the nicest purees that you could ever have. A butternut puree that will be, I mean, when you have this with like a nice steak or a London broil or whatever type of meat you want, this will pair well with almost any type of meat. Or if you want, you can make baby food out of this. So this right here is butternut squash. And this is all ready to either put into a jar or put into a mylar bag. Don't have to worry about any sharp corners with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and grind up the rest of my winter squash and bag it up and put it in my storage. So, I. I hope this might be helpful for those who might still have some winter squash left over from last harvest. But I hope you learned something new, 
and I hope this is, will be helpful for you to uh, add to your food storage. I'd like to thank you for your time. Please subscribe, and as always, go forth and freeze dry the world.